Hello everyone, my name is Misha Botting and I'm a sports psychologist working with Sports Scotland Institute of Sport. Um, I spoke with you last time about mindfulness and my work with both Paralympians and also uh, able body athletes. Uh, just a quick reminder, I work with um, these both uh, sports uh, in, in Paralympics and Olympic sports. Uh, in curling, uh, I work with Scottish uh, ladies hockey team and look forward uh, to working with our um, uh, skiers uh, and uh, uh, who are also getting ready for uh, forthcoming Olympic Games in Korea in Pyeongchang in February 2018. And um, so th these are my key clients and uh, today I wanted to extend sharing with you uh, my experience working with them and using mindfulness uh, in my work. In the part one, uh, I was talking about embracing ourselves in terms of not separating uh, ourselves in the negative and positive side, uh, and also being present. And we did a little exercise uh, that helps you to stay in the presence, just be aware of the environment, um, and be aware of what is happening when it's happening. That is the definition of mindfulness. And today I'm going to uh, share with you my experience working with athletes um, in terms of taking care of themselves. Uh, just very fresh example, today I met uh, two athletes um, and um, I had a, a, one of the conversations was exactly about this topic so it was a great uh, reminder for me uh, uh, to take it in a little bit more details and share it with you. So. Um, Mindfulness um, in performance sports. You know, in performance sport, you probably know that um, uh, there is a lot of uh, heroes, and probably you have one or two examples yourselves. Um, and um, just remember how they look like. They are very powerful. Uh, they are very strong-willed individuals uh, with a great uh, enthusiasm, motivation, ability to work, uh, ability to learn, if you like. Um, and tactically aware and physically extraordinary specimens. Um, and that's what we see every day. Um, however, what we don't see that much, that there's obviously a, a flip side to that, uh, where when the things go, um, don't go according to the plan, um, that happens both in unsuccessful competitions this happens with making errors um, and also experiencing injuries. And um, I work with sports psychology uh, for past 12 years. I can't recall one single individual in endurance sports and target sports, uh, in individual and team sports who haven't had injuries. Um, and this is just a part of uh, performance sport. And what is very important is not necessarily what is happening with athletes, but how they respond to difficult times, difficult situations. Um, and that's where mindfulness works quite well. Obviously, you know, we don't see uh, these difficult times, challenging times of the athletes. Uh, perhaps uh, in the interviews with the athletes, we hear the glim glimpse and pick up on details how um, tough was the journey towards their successes. But uh, difficult times uh, are, go hand in hand uh, with uh, the glamour, if you like, of performance sport. Um, so what is very important is to, as I said, that's where mindfulness is important, to embrace the two sides, to accept that a lot of the time will be successful and sometimes will experience setbacks and that is the key. As you uh, perhaps involved in the um, amateur sports, uh, you do the exercise um, for yourself to keep fit, uh, you know that sometimes it's really, really tricky and uh, most of the time it's much easier uh, to be positive and happy and mindful and joyful, if you like, when things go well. 
uh, it's somewhat a different, difficult situa different uh, sorry, situation when uh, things are not go going according to the plan. Um, you know, you feel a lot of frustration and happiness and um, um, the mood drops down sometimes. And uh, all of us experience that and, you know, I certainly start uh, questioning myself, you know, why is it happening to me? It's not supposed to happen. And, uh, you know, feel very frustrated and uh, unhappy when I feel down. Uh, so this happens with everyone. And uh, in these challenging critical situations, what is very important is, you know, what is the plan? How do you plan to go through these tough situations? And of course, uh, this will define how, uh, if you like, and the mentally resilient the athlete is, or you are, if you like. If you are not an athlete, you know, in principle, I don't see a, a huge difference uh, between ordinary people and athletes. They just ordinary people as well who do um, sometimes extraordinary work. Uh, sometimes extraordinary jobs and sometimes not, incidentally. Um, so the key here is how we bounce back, how we uh, recover, if you like, after injuries, after di difficult times. Because nobody, athletes certainly, never signed a contract that I'll be always successful and everything will be, st it'll be a straight road to the Olympic medals or Paralympic medals uh, from now. So it is important to acknowledge that the responsibility for taking care of oneself lies with oneself. Who is able to t take better care of you? Are you going to rely on your family, your friends, um, or perhaps a partner? Or you're going to do it systematically for yourself and take responsibility for getting over the difficult times yourself. That is important point. Uh, I can't emphasize it more stronger than what is the plan? What do you usually do? Of course, the social support, family support is very important, crucial. Nevertheless, it, you cannot rely 100% on others to pick you up through difficult times and just hope that they, you, they will carry you through through these through this hard times. So therefore, I would encourage you to take a little bit more responsibility to take care of yourselves. And here, what is the plan? What can be done? Certainly, the mindful to mindfulness is important in terms of just acknowledging what is going on. And uh, this is number one. Without acknowledging the difficult times, <coughs> excuse me, and how um, tough it is for you at this moment of time, it is impossible to uh, do anything about it if you are just simply not aware of what's going on. And secondly, becoming connected with yourself. And this requires a lot of bravery. Um, you know, in my life experience, when things are tough, I constantly run away. I switch on the television, I listen to the radio, and bury my, my head in the sound. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and uh, it is important maybe to learn to confront uh, the difficult times and connect with the hard times with yourself without running away requires bravery. Um, and thirdly, you have to approach this process with kindness. Um, of course, you know, maybe uh, this is an unusual thing <laughs> for you to hear because it's much easier to be tough on yourself, isn't it? When um, um, things get tough, tough gets, gets going. What's the expression? Pardon? <laughs> Sorry if I, if I uh, uh, misquote it. Uh, but it's much easier to be tough to oneself. Uh, not so 
um, accepted, if you like, to be kind to oneself. Um, so what do you do when things are tough? Um, we already established that when things are going well, it's easy to keep going. And uh, everyone joy joins you with kind of celebration of success, if you like. It is completely different situation uh, when uh, you're going through tough times. So do you become more depressed, perhaps? Um, harsh on yourself, absolutely. Um, and that's what athletes in, in high performance do. Uh, for many, many years, they learn this behavior of being tough on themselves. And therefore, in difficult situations, very frequently they become even tougher. Uh, so that's how their intuition works. And very frequently my advice is to be counterintuitive and bring self-kindness in uh, your practice. Uh, and the, the word practice is also important. Uh, if you think that you can switch on uh, self-kindness uh, on and off like a flick um, uh, of light, uh, it perhaps uh, not work as well. Uh, my advice is to uh, practice as much as you can. So three things, let's recap it very quickly. First is noticing that you're going through difficult times. You're facing a set setback, whether it is an injury, whether it is a challenge, for example, at your work, or with uh, your amateur sport, uh, or it could be any of the situation. My advice is just make sure that at the beginning uh, you select to face up to a mild problem, not necessarily a devastating one, uh, just to kick you off with uh, kind of the process of uh, being kind to oneself, to yourself. Um, so let's think just for a second about uh, the challenge that is difficult one, not a devastating one. Just acknowledge that. And second part, that's the first part. The first part is be mindful of that. The second part is becoming connected with yourself. And again, I'm going to repeat myself, this requires bravery. Just face up to the challenge, no need to run away, and connect to yourself, and maybe even acknowledge where do you feel in your body when you become aware of the challenge that you experience at this moment. Sometimes people feel it in kind of tightening shoulders, if you like, or butterflies in the tummy, um, or feeling just unrested, uh, unsettled. This is certainly the indication that you are bringing this to your awareness, connecting with, with yourself. And a third and a part, final part, just be kind to yourself. Just say something that is meaningful because perhaps in this situation um, you can be a little bit more kind of uh, brushing off the, the genuine kindness to yourself and be a little bit more sarcastic. Bring the genuineness back and say something really meaningful and kind to yourself. For example, I acknowledge the pain that these thoughts cause me. There is no need to hurry, there is no need to rush through this exercise. Just take your time, sit proudly and acknowledge the difficult times and with kindness. And the kindness part is essential. Genuineness and kindness to yourself. See, perhaps you feel that this is not such an easy thing, and it isn't. Um, this is certainly requires time. Requires time and practice. And just to share with you, that's what I enjoy. This part of my work is very enjoyable with um, athletes. If 
um, I introduce a new skill like this one I just shared with you. A lot of the athletes are very, very determined to explore and make it work for them. Um, I don't have to motivate the athletes. A lot of uh, um, people ask me, you know, do you motivate your athletes? You know, a sports psychologist, you motivate the athletes. I say, I don't really. Um, <laughs> I don't motivate the athletes. They motivate themselves. And uh, an exercise, a challenge of this kind, is certainly received very positively uh, with uh, uh, athletes that I work with, my clients. Um, and in order to make it not my exercise but their exercise they practice all the time and this is my advice to you you don't have to create a half an hour practice session not even 15 minutes uh, similar to what we did in the last uh, session talking about mindfulness part one you can do it with three breaths three kind breaths. You can do it anywhere first thing in the morning if you like. Or you can do it at your desk in the office. Anywhere at all. As long as you do it genuinely. As long as you feel and bring the kindness to yourself into your own heart. That is the key. Practice these three kind breaths to yourself on a regular basis. Why not three times uh, during the day, first thing in the morning? Just reconnect with yourself through the breathing and awareness of what you're just about to, ch uh, to face uh, during the day. And maybe, um, maybe not up straight after your lunch, <laughs> but maybe at some point during the day again through three mindful breaths just sit and just witness connect with yourself through this breathing with kindness and some people use the word compassion I think that this is the right word to use in this um, in this context um, and uh, you can certainly do it in the evening at some point but my encouragement to you, please bring quality uh, to this exercise. You don't have to uh, do it uh, for long periods of time if you are unfamiliar with this type of exercise. But you certainly can um, do it frequently with high degree of quality. Um, just maybe one more idea. Uh, sometimes people put their hands on their heart and feel the warmth of the hand, which is a gesture of compassion. I encourage you certainly to um, give it a go, practice, and also uh, be brave to try. Um, not only um, stick to what I said, but try what works for you. That is the most important thing. And here, of course, you need to trust yourself. Um, I certainly think that there, there could be a structure, but nevertheless, you have to experiment and work out what works for you. That is important. Practice is the key. Um, and to just close it down, just to a uh, final couple of thoughts, um, just to summarize very briefly, you have to make a um, kind of take a couple of minutes to think. Um, who will be responsible for your well-being, uh, mental well-being? Is it up to your family, your friends to pick you up, your partner? Or is it up to you to do that? That is a very important point. If you think that you carry some responsibility for your own well-being, state of mind, I would strongly encourage you to practice being kind to yourself through mindfulness, bringing mindfully um, the difficult times that you are going through sometimes and not running away from them with courage 
and bravery face up to the challenge that you have and do it with kindness bring this kindness awareness of kindness and bring it right into your heart you can certainly make a connection with your heart and stay there again not necessarily the length of the exercise that is important but the quality and genuineness and please try to um, be very very uh, systematic with it practice on daily basis two three times a day see how it goes and again be brave to uh, make sure that you are uh, experimenting with it it doesn't have to be exactly my way or anyone else's way it is about experimenting, practicing, and trusting that this process will make difference to you. Okay? Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions um, uh, from Gordon uh, in Glasgow. Um, yeah. Thanking me <laughs> uh, for, uh, for the efforts that, and, and sharing these experiences. Uh, one, more, my, one more thing. Um, yes, certainly, uh, about the books and websites. Um, uh, there's plenty of literature uh, on uh, being uh, on mindfulness and mindfulness in sport. Um, I would say, uh, first of all, what you need to do is to, just to see what, what is out there. Um, you know, a, a particular book um, on mindfulness doesn't kind of jump uh, uh, up in my memory, but please just Google um, the mindfulness um, in the particular context, it could be mindfulness at work, it could be minus mindfulness in sport, um, and uh, just to see what is available. Um, just to give you a, a bit of a direction that uh, mindfulness um, as a concept, as a philosophy, comes from uh, the Eastern uh, philosophy. Um, and there is a lot of kind of links between Eastern philosophy uh, and mindfulness. Um, if you are not necessarily um, excited about uh, kind of the, uh, the religious side of it, my um, advice to you is to stick with the spiritual side of uh, mindfulness and certainly there's a huge amount of uh, literature out there um, the, perhaps one um, book that uh, kind of springs to my mind is uh, full catastrophe of living uh, by John Kabat-Zinn um, it is quite a dramatic <laughs> title uh, but I have to tell you when uh, I uh, started reading it um, this book offers a lot of advice and a lot of exercises uh, that I believe absolutely brilliant um, again just don't take it for granted practice and experiment and change exactly to um, what what is um, important for you and how you kind of feel um, moving forward uh, with mindfulness um, so what I would like to say is that um, please watch for our athletes uh, who are getting ready for um, Olympics, uh, Winter Olympic Games and Paralympic Games uh, that will take place in February in Korea, Pyeongchang um, and um, speaking with my colleagues here uh, we agreed to come back to the subject of mindfulness uh, as we progress towards the Olympics and Paralympics um, and uh, we certainly uh, be able to uh, kind of revisit, answer your questions that you may have online and I'm quite happy to update my blog uh, online as well. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time. Can you show me one last question from Jeannie Bannister yeah. about how you would recommend using mindfulness in a race or event? Mindfulness in the race in event at a very, very specific point. Thanks very much, Jamie. Uh, appreciate your question. Um, so, um, yes, what is important is I perhaps <coughs> uh, was talking about using the mindfulness in this particular context in the first program where, you know, the negative thoughts perhaps uh, pop in your mind um, and alongside of negative thoughts and in relation to what's happening in the race itself, sometimes uh, your competitors may overtake you or sometimes you experience uh, kind of discomfort or some level of anxiety and here what is very important is not to fight against yourself is to stick 
and stay true to the purpose of the race itself. So please just be mindful of the fact that you have a goal to reach for your best in this particular race, not necessarily um, fighting against yourself. Of course, the negative thoughts will come and you just have to embrace and accept that sometimes you have negative thoughts, sometimes you have positive thoughts, but you are one. And therefore, don't battle against yourself. Just embrace, uh, just have acceptance of sometimes you're going through tough times in the race and sometimes you go through good times in the race. As long as you refocus very gently on the race itself and able to follow through and uh, kind of switch back to the state of mind of flow. My recommendation to you is just to Google uh, the word flow in sport. Um, this state of mind will certainly help you to get the best out of yourself. Um, thanks for watching again, guys, and uh, I certainly uh, will certainly return to the subject uh, uh, as we're progressing towards Pyeongchang. Uh, as I mentioned to you that I work with uh, our Paralympians and able-bodied athletes quite a lot in variety of sports uh, for the Winter Olympic Games, and we'll certainly revisit the subject of mindfulness as we progress along towards the Games in February 2018. Thanks for your time and I'll see you later.